thank you very much again. Um, so I, as introduced, I'm Francisco Castillo. I'm I'm usually called Kiko for short, K-I-K-O. And I'm from Mainilad Water Services, which is a water company in the Philippines. And uh, I will discuss a little bit about IoT as well as the convergence of IT and OT. And uh, I, I prepared a series of videos, short videos, so that you can actually see that um, what I'm discussing is actually a reality for us today. So just uh, very briefly, I will just, just one slide about who we are, and then I will share some of the projects that we've done. And then uh, maybe instead of benefits and challenges, I think uh, I'd like to discuss what other things moving forward we, we plan to do. So a little bit about Mainilad Water. So Mainilad Water is a private company it has a it was granted a 25 year concession by the government currently it's the largest in the philippines and we serve water septage and sewerage services to around 9 million people in the west zone of metro manila and the neighboring province of cavite so we cover actually around 17 cities and municipalities which are part of the metro the greater metro manila area so um you can imagine that uh we cover really a, a very wide area and one of the challenges uh in a water company unlike for example in a factory is that in bringing iot we're talking about having assets distributed all over the place um, which gives some challenges in terms of communications uh, connectivity before I do that, let me talk about what IoT or Internet of Things means for us. Actually, this journey we started very long ago. We started way back in 2012, even before IoT became a buzzword. And the idea really was to capture data from all our sensors that we had in all our different assets. And that means in our pipes, in our reservoirs, dams, in our water treatment plants, in our sewage treatment plants, um, pumping stations, lift stations that are all over the place. The idea is to be able to store this information, this, this data, long term, in, meaning years, but of a fine granularity, sometimes milliseconds, but usually seconds resolution, so that in a way, this is a, a repository of technical data that we can actually use for whatever purposes that may have. Um, at the same time, in 2014, we converged the OT and IT space under my uh, division. So I am lucky to, to be able to be in charge of, of both. Uh, this makes it easier because otherwise, you see a continuous rivalry between the two. Um, and I always say, you know, the way that was possible to converge IT and OT is, you know, if it's under me, I can't argue with myself. So that's the simplest way to do it. Um, in this way, we can get all this uh, sensor data and actually feed it into the different IT applications that can use this data and make sense out of it. So I will show you a short video of how our IoT platform looks like. We call it the field mouse. So first you have a menu of displays and you have something like this, which is a dashboard, which shows uh, some of the key indicators. Say for example, the water level in our dam, if we click on that, we get actually the trend or we could see the water production in one of our plants. This is our largest or second largest plant, 924 million liters a day. And we can see the trends, right? Um, we could also see our, our losses, non-revenue water, as well as other information. If we also have a series of, of small maps which display the pressure um, along different um, areas within our concession, if you see green, that means it's good. 
If it's red, that means it has low pressure, maybe maintenance or possibly a leak. And we can actually even select specific subzones to see the, the pressure profile. So this, for example, is one area. And we can see in the last 14 days, the trend. We could change the scale. Say we want to change it to one day. We can see the 24-hour profile. And if we click on that, we can actually uh, see details. And we can actually go back in time. If you want to scroll to the left, and see the historical of that, we can do that. Right. So this, this gives us a very rich source of information. We can actually even go to the plants. So this, for example, is a sewage uh, lift station. It's a series of, of pumping stations, pumping the sewage until it reaches the, the sewage treatment plant. And all this data is live. If we click on the level, we can see Sorry, let me just go back. We can actually see the, the level of sewerage that was processed in the last so many hours or days as we wish. Um, we could, for example, select a water treatment plant. Uh, this is one of our uh, newest water treatment plants. And we can see we have a dashboard here which summarizes the operation. We can see the level of the reservoir. We can see the production. We can see even the status of the filters, the pressure on each, um, and so forth. We can even see the, the, the chemical composition of, of the water, right? Um, and we can even select, let's say we go to one particular area. We say, let's go to one filter. We could actually get the details of what is happening in, this is a microfiltration uh, filter in, rack one and we can actually see the characteristic and each of these points is a dynamic point meaning to say if i click on it i will get the trends right and i and, and it all those all that information is stored long term so a lot a lot of information a lot of screens I, just to show you uh, we have hundreds of screens with different information with thousands of sensors and this is continuously expanding so that, that was the, the first thing we did. We developed this platform for us to get all this information. Um, it's not just monitoring and report, but the idea is with that information, we can actually optimize our operations and optimize the control. So we also built a central control room which monitors these things and adjusts accordingly. So this is a picture of our central control room. It's a 24 by seven uh, operations. We have actually two control rooms for redundancy and they can actually uh, visualize everything that is happening in our water and sewerage network. Um, another example, this is a sewerage treatment plant. You can see the incoming sewerage. This is quite dirty water. And after it's treated, before it goes to the river, you can see it's of a very good quality. It's, it's transparent. What I wanted to highlight here really is that you can see here a bunch of sensors. This is a flow meter. We have a pH meter. We have a dissolved oxygen meter. We, we monitor many different um, chemicals that are in the water to ensure that um, before the water is discharged, it's of acceptable environmental standards and these these sensors are everywhere are everywhere in we have more than um 200 or 300 plants of differing size uh this is my team they're calibrating the the sensors because sensors also need to be regularly cal recalibrated so um with regards to the convergence of IT and OT, um, we, we really see the advantage of that because we can actually use all this information, and these are the typical sensors that we have in the plant, and use that IoT data in order to feed different applications. And later on, I will show you some of the applications that we have developed in order to support 
the operations of our company. Uh, samples of these are, for example, reports, uh, simple reports. The, the screens I showed you earlier can also be accessed via an Excel plugin. And everybody in the company knows Excel. And usually uh, it's the preferred way of getting the data and analyzing. And our engineers have actually are knowledgeable enough that once they get the data, they can actually develop their own applications, their own reports, their own analysis. Hydraulic modeling, uh, this is a core function in, in the water industry, wherein you model how your water network behaves, um, detecting leaks, and I have a very good example later on. Can we also display the data on our maps, uh, our geographic information system, and linking that with customer data. I also have another example later on. But we also install sensors in our pumps, in our motors, such as vibration meters, um, temperature sensors, which give you a good idea of whether that particular asset is going to have a breakdown in the future if you don't do anything about it. So we actually implemented condition-based maintenance such that if a particular sensor uh, triggers a warning, it actually goes into our ERP and automatically generates a work order for inspection of the asset. And of course, operational alarms. Um, I mentioned one of the challenges is communications. And that means that we really make use of a very wide array of communication types. For the larger plants, we use fiber, but we have actually some very small facilities. For example, this is a pipe, which may be quite uh, distant from the plant itself, maybe a few hundred meters. So we also use industrial wireless to get the data back into the plant and then from there, transmit it using fiber. We also have facilities such as this. This is a cage, and inside is the, is the controller, controlling pumps, valves, and, and taking sensor information off of these pumps and the, the pipes that are actually under, underground. So this is a, an autonomous controller, but we actually want to be able to get information from what is happening at the site and transmit that centrally to our central control room. So putting a fiber in many of these facilities that we have all over would be quite an expensive endeavor. So we were one of the pioneers to use 3G and GPRS. And this is a 3G or a GPRS modem that connects to our PLC cabinet and transmits that back to our central control room. So we have even smaller facilities that are just using SMS. At the end of the day, we use whatever is available and is economically uh, feasible. Um, so we have really many types of communication. I'll just give you another, another example. This is our geographic information system or map. Um, and I'll show you an actual demo. So the GIS maps all our assets on the field. So if we zoom in, Eventually, our customers and meters will be displayed. Here you can see a customer in the form of a premise in yellow, right? You can see the, the name of the customer and the meter with a little M. These are historical leaks. We can also see the characteristics of a valve and even the characteristics of a pipe. This is a tertiary pipe, it's PVC, and we can see the customers connected to it. We also did and we invested in aerial photography. Instead of using Google Maps or something similar, we actually undertook our own aerial photography because we all our assets are actually underground. So we need a very, very precise location of our assets before we dig, for example, to do refurbishment or to do maintenance. And we needed a sub one meter resolution, which we did not find available in the market. So that's why we resorted to doing our own aerial photography. 
Um, with something like this, we can see all our customers, our meters and pipes displayed, and we know where each customer is connected to, such that we know what affects the customer at each location in terms of pressure and flow along the pipes. Um, another example, this is a leak management application. By getting all this IoT data, flow and pressure data of our pipes, and correlating that with billing information, as well as our GIS, our map, we actually feed that into our water loss management software. And from here, we're able to get leak management reports. This actually tells us where leaks will most likely, are most likely occurring in our network. I'll give you an, uh, a real example. Um, we had a problem of a large water leak in near the port area in Malabon. And the initial assessment by our construction group was to replace that whole pipe segment. And that was going to cost $1.7 million. Um, our hydraulic engineers with the, with the use of these tools said, oops, let's wait a minute. Why don't we try and simulate and see where that leak is probably in our network. So the software identified an area where the leak would probably be. So what happened is that area was dug up and true enough, the leak was found there. The total spend for repairing that leak was 65,000 pesos or approximately $1,200 versus the $1.7 million. Just to prove that I'm not um, stretching the truth, this actually won a prize in London. This was the Bentley Systems B Inspired Awards in 2013. And this is our young hydraulic engineer picking up the prize on behalf of Mainila. So there was a huge benefit for the company. So as you can see, all this IoT and IoT endeavors are actually uh, not science fiction. They, they, they are existing today. This was in 2013. From 2013 to today, we've progressed even more. This is another example. We call it the automatic customer contact system. But actually, it's, it's more than a system. It's an, it's an integration of many different systems. Um, the idea is having the GIS or the mapping system as the central heart. We can actually um, identify or program interruptions due to leaks or repairs that need to be done in our network by plotting them in the GIS. And um, through the central control room, um, doing that plot, getting that data available to the crews that are on the field using a tablet. Um, I'll just show you a demo again. And this is actually the IoT data, this overlaid on the GIS, so we can see the pressures, right? And whenever there is a maintenance that is to be done, the control room personnel map a polygon of that area that is going to be under maintenance. Uh, here in red, we see the ongoing, and in yellow, the one that is programmed. And we can see actually the details of the, the work maintenance that has to be done, including the duration, what time it will last, right? We can see it here. So what happens now is that within that polygon, we can identify all the different customers that are affected. We can see, as we will see, right, this is one particular customer. If we click around, we can see the different customers affected. So now we can extract all those customers. And if we have a registered cell phone, uh, automatically SMS them and inform them proactively of the interruption in water. As of today, I will admit this is not fully automatic. There's still, it's still semi-automatic. But uh, we're now doing the, the next phase where all of this will be done in an automatic fashion so that um, it goes through the parsing engine and automatically informs our customer, as well as our um, 
uh, call center agents. They can actually uh, access that and see what is the reason for having a low pressure in that area. Um, that's all I wanted to share today uh, due to the limited time. Um, CK mentioned that I published this book. Um, aside from it being available in, in Springer, which is the German publisher, um, it's also available in some of the online bookstores, including Amazon, they have a Kindle version, and some others. And it really talks about how to manage uh, technology. That That is really, it doesn't talk about technology itself, it talks about how to manage it. Here in this, in this sessions, we've discussed that the soft skills are so important. And I really believe that uh, managing technology is not just like uh, managing anything else. It takes special skills to do that. So in case you're interested, uh, please, I would refer you to it. Uh, 